Hello friends and welcome back. My name is Deepa from Designs by D and today I have my final Spellbinders collection video post for you. So today I'm sharing with you the Winter Garden release. I have two die sets, uh, um, actually a glimmer set and a die set to share with you today. And here I'm showing you three cards that I made, but I'm only going to be focusing on the first card, which is a card that makes a bit of a foliage border, which is highlighting that beautiful florist tree. Now, if you do want to see some short reels of how I put the other two cards together, don't forget to like and subscribe and no hit the notification bell. Um, so these are the two sets that I have. This is the florist tree and this is a glimmer plate. And then I've also got the Winter Evergreen Foliage and Ladybug set. Now, this is a cool set. It's got some large pieces of foliage. You can see how huge it is. It is about as big as that tree. And then it's got these cute little ladybugs that you can add to your projects as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to foil this florist tree with some polished brass foil. I've got a black piece of um, cardstock here. This is about... Um, I think it's a larger piece. It's six and three quarters by four and three quarters. I like making bigger cards. And if you are a fan of bigger cards like I am, the foliage set that I'm using here today is perfect. Those branches are super large. You're not going to have to cut too many out to cover a background maybe or to just add maybe a couple as an accent. They are perfect for Christmas cards. So what I like to do is kind of center my glimmer plate. I add my foil underneath using the hinge method, which is Yana's method. And then I cut off the excess foil. Now I don't cut off the excess foil ahead of time because I'm just lazy and this is just easier to do. And I don't throw away those extra little pieces. I keep them for small sentiments that I might want to foil later on. Now you can see I have a bit of over foiling here. So all I'm going to do is use my Couture Creations eraser and I'm just going to erase the little bits of over foiling. Now here's a neat little tip. Every time you do erase off of darker cardstock like this, you get a bit of a lighter area. All you have to do is rub your finger over top and the natural oils from your finger kind of fill in the areas that you've kind of that you've erased and the cardstock returns to the same color as the rest of the page. So moving on, I'm going to just attach all of my little branches to some white cardstock. You can see I have different colors of white. I'm just using up scraps. This is what I like to do to use them up. They're different colors, not a big deal. I'm adding ink. So I've cut out a bunch of these and you can see here on this one, there's little indents for the berries. So if you wanted to, you could actually use a smaller detailing brush and ink those up in red or some berry color that you might like, maybe blue. But I'm not going to do that today because I'm going to end up adding some gems in red to highlight the berries. So what I like to do is to keep my negative pieces after I've die cut. I add some washi to the back and inlay the pieces. These are all the inks I'm going to be using. I'm using Distress Oxides and Pine Needles, Rustic Wilderness, Peeled Paint, and some Walnut Stain. These are the smaller blending brushes that I'm going to use. I just got these off of Amazon because they're so great. I will link something similar in my blog post, which I have linked below in the description. If you're looking for any of the products I'm using today, they're all linked there. So don't forget to check that out. And I'll also include descriptions of how I put together the two other cards in there as well. So all I'm doing is adding ink just all over. I'm, I'm haphazardly adding it. There's no rhyme or reason. Um, I started with the peeled paint and now I'm moving on to rustic wilderness, which I think is the next darkest color. I'm going to add the ink, as I said, in such a varied way, because when you actually look at pine needles or any type of leaf in nature it doesn't have one color throughout it kind of varies in color it turns from brown to green to lighter green to dark green so that's the kind of effect that i'm trying to achieve here as i'm adding my inks now the last color well actually the second last color i'm going to add here is the pine needles which i think is a bit darker so i'm adding it in the areas that are not covered or areas where there might be shadows so that's what's going to happen with these three colors of ink and then on top of it when the colors mix together they make new colors so you're not just going to get three colors of green you're going to get probably six maybe a bunch more than just that so i'm just adding that ink all over. I'm making sure I've covered everything. And then I'm going to move to the walnut stain. Now for the walnut stain, I'm going to be a little bit more methodical as to where I add the ink. So I'm going to add it more along the pieces where I think you'd see the branches showing through or the actual like center of the branch. 
So these areas would be like the very bottom, anywhere in the center where I see there's a bit more of a stick versus um, branches. And once I take it out, you can see that the effect is absolutely phenomenal. Those mix of colors look astonishing on the white. As I said, that white, the difference in the white cardstock didn't matter at all. It just adds to the variation of color, which is going to make your branch look a bit more realistic. So you can see once those are all kind of out of the negative pieces, they look pretty nice actually. They turned out a bit better than I thought they would. So I've got two of the largest branches and three of the two smaller branches. So I'm going to be using that to create a foliage border on that black background that we foiled. Okay, so now I'm using Yana's Christmas sentiments and I've got a main sentiment and a sub sentiment that I'm going to be foiling here. As you can see, these are the little triangles that I cut off of that florist tree. So as I mentioned, I'm not wasting any of that foil. I am using it to death. I hate wasting foil. It's so beautiful and it's not too expensive, but I just, I can't waste something so pretty. So I actually have a little box that I keep to the side of my desk and I have tons of extra little pieces of foil in there that I can use for small sentiments like this. So now I've got this um, this other set, which is Birthday Unboxing Glimmer. This is from the last release from last month. And I find that this little banner die works perfect for all of these little Christmas sentiments. So I've die cut the main sentiment, Merry Christmas, and all is calm and all is bright out of the red. Now I'm showing you these little ladybugs. So they come as one die. It cuts out two bugs, a bigger and a smaller. And I'm actually going to color these in with some Copics. I'm using R29, 100, and R27. So basically black and red like a, a ladybug. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm, I'm not doing this in any special way. I'm just adding my lightest, my lightest red. I'll add a little bit of a darker red for a little bit of shading. And then I'll add the black to the top and bottom for the body. And then the little dots of the ladybug. So I usually neglect these little ladybugs. If there's actually another set which has the ladybugs in them and I did not use them. So I thought for this, I just had to. And it works perfectly with the color scheme that I've got going, which is a green, gold, red, and um, black. And the red and black on these ladybugs, just it looks so cute. And they're just going to kind of sit on the branches on that beautiful foliage border that I'm going to add to this card. And I think in the end, I'll probably add a bit of glossy accents to this. So it has a bit of shine and stands out a little. So I'll just finish coloring these little ladybugs in. And then once I'm done, it's important to kind of keep this in a little container and put it to the side so that they don't get lost. So now let's go ahead and put everything together. I've got my foliage pieces, my sentiments and my little ladybugs. And you can see that I use a lot of little sectional plates and little bowls to keep all my die cuts in. And I find that these really come in handy. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add my foliage around my border. And I'm just adding it with some Barely Arts glue. And you can see I have it overhanging. Okay, so there's pieces hanging off the edge. What I'll do is I'll eventually cut those off. And I'll use the extra little pieces to kind of fill in that border. Now... I'm not keeping it one dimensional. I am going to add some of these branches with a bit of foam. Um, these are some really small foam squares that I have on hand. I kind of ran out of my Spellbinders foam squares from the card kits. But um, these are a little bit thinner. They don't sit up as high, but they are nice and small. So I can kind of stick them on the back of these branches where the berries would be, where I have a little bit more area to stick them on. So I'll just continue to build up my border in this manner. And I find that these branches are perfect for this technique. I love creating borders like this. And what it does is it highlights that beautiful tree in the center. Um, these foliage pieces would be great to use on other cards as well. Maybe you could cut them off and add them to the center of another tree to give it a bit more depth and breadth. Or maybe you can just use them as a highlight behind a sentiment, which I've actually done on one of the other cards that I made for this collection, which I'll be showing you in my reels. So now I'm going ahead and cutting off all of those extra pieces that are hanging off the edge. Now I try my best to use these up as much as I can. 
And what I'll do is I'll just take, you can see here I'm doing that. I'm taking the little pieces and I'm just kind of filling in that border. It just makes it a little bit more complete and fills in the edges. You could also take um, these branches if you have some extra and put them on the inside of your card and have them kind of hanging off the bottom left edge or the bottom right edge to just create a bit of interest. Add a few little berries, add some little red gems like I'm going to do on the front and then it just kind of creates um, continuity in your card and continues your design on the inside. So now I'm adding my sentiment. Again, I'm propping it up with um, a foam strip and then I'll cut off the overhang and then I'll have the other sentiment at the top left hand side. So it kind of balances out the red on the card. Now finally, these are the, so these are my berries, my red gems that I have here. These are nail art gems that I've gotten off of Amazon. All you have to do is type in nail art gem, they'll come off. It'll come up. It's pretty inexpensive and it has lots of different sizes. Spellbinders also has their own gems that you could look into getting as well. They um, are perfect to add on to any order that you might have. So all I'm doing now is kind of adding them to the areas where I can see those intent indentations on the branches where the berries should be. And then I'm also adding them in different areas as well just to kind of fill in that border and add a bit more red. Now finally I'll add my little ladybugs. I think I only added three here because I am following that rule of three and usually three is a little more aesthetically pleasing to look at on artwork so I'll just put my three ladybugs on and now I will attach this panel to the card base. So my card base is a five by seven inch card base. As I said it's a larger card because these branches are just so nice and big. And now I'll go ahead and add that um, glossy accents to the ladybug. So the glossy accents at first, it has a little bit of an opaque look. And the way you know it's dry is it will become completely clear and you'll see your image underneath. So you can see on the black part of the ladybug, it looks pretty opaque. Now I've also got some Tonic Studio Dew Drops and I'm just going to add these as little drops on the branches as if, you know, it's dew first thing in the morning or maybe it's rain, maybe kind of look like a bit of frost from the cold outside. I just thought it added a little something extra to the card. So these are all of the cards that I created for this collection. Here's the one that we created today. You can see it looks absolutely stunning and those branches really stand out on the black of the background. This is a slimline card I created with the florished die. Um, I used some prism foil for that and then I added some glitter to the top and bottom to create kind of an icicle look. And here's the final card which highlights those beautiful branches behind one of the older sentiment foil plates. So that's my inspiration for this collection and that's kind of my wrap up for my Spellbinders inspiration this month. Maybe I'll have a couple more cards that I'll add on a little later, we'll see. But um, this is what I've got for you. Don't forget, I'll be adding my reels in the next couple days of the other two cards if you are interested. And if you do want to know a bit more about the process, go ahead and click my blog link in the description below. I have written descriptions of how I put these together along with all, this, all of the supplies linked in that post as well. So I hope you've been inspired and I hope that you all have a great day. I'll see you again next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.